Well, hi. Uh, so I have 15 minutes. It's ridiculous. Uh, so thank, thank you for the uh, thanks, thanks, thanks to the organisers. I must say I've, I've really enjoyed. I'm really glad I came. I've learnt a lot from this um, from this from this panel. Um, I don't know whether you'll learn very much from this paper, but here we go. Um, so this 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 is part of a, um, a project which aims to assess the relation between Hittite, Luvian, and Greek religion, and uh, how are these religious systems um, connected. Um, there's some direct evidence for contact in the Late Bronze Age. The best evidence is um, deities of Ahiyawa and Lazbara at the Hittite court. That's a bit in red. There must have been contact with Wilusa as well, if, as I think, the deity Apaliuna in the treaty is Greek. Must have been much, much more than that, that we don't have evidence for. And also contact between Greek and Luvian cultures of the first millennium, the sort of inherited stuff from the second. If you compare these cultures, religious cultures, what you find is similarities and differences. And you can look at each of those um, similarities. The question is, um, do similarities ever imply an historical connection? Um, how do we assess that? obvious things to look at are, are historical context and also uniqueness. And you can also look at differences. I'm not, going to do, I'm not going to do that today, but differences are very interesting, actually, when you do this sort of work. So you can look at different aspects of religion, festivals, sacrifices, dedications, we were just um, hearing about. Today, I had this idea a few months ago that it would be interesting to look at war rituals and um, religion and war. Uh, one reason that makes sense is, um, is that um, war is a context for the diffusion of technology and religion. You think of horses and chariots in the mid second millennium, or it sort of sweeps across uh, the west, the, the eastern Mediterranean. Um, battering rams, whole chapter could be written about battering rams, fortifications, and um, context for this sort of change, all sorts of things, an embarrassment of things. Um, uh, you think of military alliances, um, uh, mercenaries, we think of the um, uh, the Durden, uh, the, 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 these Durden people who fought at the Battle of Kadesh, which we have a picture of people. The Durden are often thought to come from uh, the area of uh, Wulusa, so that would immediately provide a sort of context for the diffusion of military technology. Um, and, and of course, um, there's enormous, it doesn't need, I don't need to waste 30 seconds telling you that um, there, there's, there are enormous number of occasions where we could have had military contact between uh, the Mycenaeans and powers of either Western Anatolia or even, even the Hittites. There were lots of uh, military confrontations. <clears throat> Evidence. Um, well, um, I wanted to say something about archaeology since we're actually at the EAA. I am not an archaeologist. Um, there's the famous um, thing you always think of is the famous bronze sword found at Hattusha in 1991, which seems to record Tudelia's attack on Asua in the West in about 1400 BC, which we were hearing about uh, this morning. Some have doubted uh, that this is a Mycenaean sword. I, I said that because um, Professor Yanakos, who isn't here, actually thinks it is a Mycenaean sword, but since he's not here, uh, I can just say that I'm, I, I don't, I, I tend to agree it's not likely to be a Mycenaean sword. There's also the issue of vocabulary, linguistic evidence, another little niche area. Um, does, do, does language suggest that um, military ideas were sort of borrowed between these cultures? I'm not sure, and I, I'm, other people will know far more about this than me. I, 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 it occurred to me there was one case, which is this word kumbakos, uh, which in Homer, once means crown of a helmet, and it's been compared to a Hurrian Hittite word, kumbahi. Um, and as usual, some people think it might be right, and some people think it's wrong. <laughs> so it really gets you nowhere. There are also some cognate terms, um, which I find exciting. There's the, uh, uh, the Hittite word lacha, uh, which means campaign, resembles the Greek word laos, which you may know as meaning people, but actually it, it means the army. Um, and we have Lahialas Campaigner, which uh, um, Tudalia actually calls himself a Lahiala 
when he returns from uh, defeating Asua. And that's a little bit like uh, Greek lawagatas. Also, Luwian kualan, which is the word for army, has been, has been compared to a Greek word. But um, even if these cognates are right, they don't really tell you anything about borrowing. War rituals. Um, now, um, I wanted to compare uh, Hittite war rituals and Greek war rituals. Uh, we're lucky to have an article on the Hittite stuff by Richard Beale, 1995, very useful. Similar secondary material on the Greek side, a book by Pritchard uh, on um, uh, Greek military practices, very useful. Um, we should remember, however, that these things occur in all ancient cultures. Um, and there's been some awareness of this recently. There's a collected volume by Krzysztof Ulanowski, a uh, Brill volume. Um, there's material on Babylon, Assyria. I put it on there. Israel, a collected volume. And Rome, uh, a book by Rupka from 1990, which sums it all up. Nothing for Egypt, as far as I can see, which would be useful. Now, it's important to realize that when you, when you do this, when you try to compare ritual practice, practice, you tend to find things in different cultures. Um, we find parallels between Hittites and Assyrians, for example. Um, one of the best early parallels noticed in the case of military rituals was actually between the Hittites and Rome, um, Italy, um, which uh, I, when Alvin was giving his paper about the Etruscans, you know, I was thinking this would fit into that quite well. Um, one, of the, one of the best, um, um, some Hittite rituals emanating from the area of Kizawatna aim to summon deities from foreign cities. And in one case, the context is clearly uh, military. An enemy, an enemy city has been captured. That's CTH 423, you can see there. Um, and um, one obvious parallel um, is this Roman Evocatio Deorum, already noticed in 1927, uh, and it seems to be, seems to be right. Um, in, in the, um, there's nothing quite th like, like this in Greek religion, um, perhaps because the thing about Greek religion is the Greeks, uh, every Greek city had the same gods. So there was no point in summoning the gods of the other city because you had your own gods anyway. That's, that's what was pointed out by, by Nielsen. Um, so anyway, this is a ni rather neat um, Hittite Roman parallel. Related to that is the declaration of war at the enemy border, uh, which we have in one Hittite text, CTH 422. Um, they invoke Zithyria. Um, one of the, who's one of the tutelary deities worshipped in the form of a hunting bag. Um, you know, these hunting bags, the cursor made of animal skins. And Zithyria has a special connection with, with war. We have a Roman equivalent of that. Um, they, the Roman, Roman priests did much the same thing. There's kind of a Greek parallel for this too called epitheasmos, so it's not so clear. Um, there's been some interest actually in the, the idea that the, the Greek myth of the golden fleece comes from Hittite Anatolia and how that might have happened. But if it did happen, I like to think of the, you know, the Greek, Greek armies seeing Hittite armies who are sort of holding up these hunting bags as uh, sort of military, military symbols at the, um, at the border. To turn to the, um, uh, the relationship between Greek and Hittite military rituals, this is harder to assess because we have so little evidence for Mycenaean warfare. The exception actually is Kelder 2005, very good um, piece. Um, Prima facie, Greek hoplite warfare of the first millennium looks completely unlike anything in, in uh, late Bronze Age Anatolia, and the military rituals look different too. The Greeks sing the battle paean, and when they win, they set up the tropion, for example. There's nothing like that in the, in the Hittite material. But there are some parallels. Um, uh, one of the best is the, the so-called between the pieces ritual. You can, you can read it on the screen. Uh, the, basically, they divide these animals in two, and also a human being, uh, a prisoner, they divide in two, and they march the army through, and they do this twice. Um, remarkable ritual, because it's, uh, it's evidence for human sacrifice of a, of a sort. We don't know if that's an Azawa ritual, but it may be. Um, although, between the pieces, rituals are attested in, in, uh, in Azawa, actually, though not with humans. According to Greco-Roman sources, the Macedonians had military rituals in which an army passed between the pieces of a dog. 
though apparently um, those were part of a regular festival. And the Hittites actually also have a, uh, a military ritual for horses, where the horses have to pass between the pieces of a dog, which is exactly the same. Uh, that's Beckman, 1999, CTH 644. Nothing like this in Greek military rituals. But we do have a Greek myth where a victorious warrior who's captured a city marches an army through the, the severed halves of, a, of a, the former queen's body. This is uh, a Yolkos. Um, so perhaps that was a distant memory of it. One, one famous group of rituals are the, um, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the Azawa rituals, the plague rituals of the Azawan augurs, which are a set of rituals attributed to these ritual practitioners from Azawa, some of them augurs, one from Hapala, uh, which was being mentioned in one of the papers. Um, common subject of these rituals is plague in the army, good treatment by ba Bavanipek, 2005. Um, if Azawa was Luvian or Luwik, the Azawa rituals should be regarded as Luvian or Luwik as well. Um, and a number of other rituals which aren't explicitly said to be Azawan are grouped with them. Um, a common technique in these is elimination by ritual carrier, animals usually, so you, you kind of project the, uh, the impurity onto an animal and you get rid of the animal. Um, occasionally humans are used as well, um, and augury was probably used at an earlier point to determine the reason for the plague. Dan Danku's ritual is a good example of, of this well-known ritual directed toward Yuri and the Sibiti, the seven. Um, Yuri is a plague god, and he's asked to keep his quiver closed in, in this ritual, um, CTH 4252. Um, similarities have been noticed to the ritual performed by the augur Calchas to placate Apollo and purify the Greek army in Homer Iliad 1. I'm not going to go into the details. Um, you can, the, the pieces on the bibliography deal with it. Apollo in, in Iliad 1 does seem to resemble Yuri in, in many respects. Um, Yuri is worth dwelling on a second. He's um, um, clearly a war god. Uh, there's a, in the town of Gursa Massa in West Phrygia, his spring festival included a mock battle between the men of Hatti and the men of Massa, KUB 1735. Massa, we were hearing about Massa uh, just now, so this would be a sort of ritual enactment of the Hittites versus Western Anatolia. One wonders what languages were spoken there. Um, uh, Yari, um, so that's one case where Yari is associated with the West. There are other cases too. He's, he seems mostly Western, Southwestern, uh, so Luvian. The name resembles Greek Ares, Karuma 1968. Um, even if Ares wasn't borrowed from Yari, there's a slightly problematic uh, hypothesis. It's, I think it's possible they were equated as deities often are in cultures in the, in the late Bronze Age. A Middle Hittite text, um, the treaty between Arnawanda and Ura, Ura, which may be in the southwest, refers to an oath ritual involving God drinking to Yari. Um, and uh, so I, you can read the text there. Um, the, the god, is, uh, a write on is sent down by the Hittite king. The god Yari drink. So you're supposed to drink this god as a way of confirming the oath. Worth comparing that to a passage in Aeschylus 7 against Thebes, 5th century BC, where the seven warriors slaughter a bull into a shield, touch its blood with their hands, and swear by Ares. And also Enyo, who's a form of Ares, and Phobos, fear. So the detail there is different, but it's basically the same idea. You swear a military oath by, by Ares, it may be the same god. Um, so many other strange Hittite war rituals don't have Greek parallels. Uh, we, have, um, we have one in which the name of the enemy king is, is inscribed on cedar and that of the Hittite king on clay, and then they're both put into a fire, destroying the former and uh, baking the latter, and some other strange ones too. There's one involving a mare and a rolling wheel. Um, one where we may have a parallel is this one, um, uh, we have a ritual when the soldiers go away from the land and they go to the enemy land to fight. And the surviving part describes the lighting of a small fire and the summoning of gods. And I thought that was worth comparing with us the Spartan practice of having a fire bearer, a purphoros, 
bring fire from sacrifices at home on a campaign. That's, that's a parallel that previously hasn't been noticed. One other thing worth pointing out, there are only, by the way, if you're worrying about the time, there are 12 PowerPoint slides in this talk, so we're almost done, right? I don't know how many minutes I've been talking. One other thing is, um, is, the, tru is the truce. Um, in classical Greece, some states, um, some states refused to go to war during ma major festivals. For example, Sparta refused to fight battles during the Carnea um, festival. It's hard to find parallels to this in other ancient cultures. I was writing a paper on truces a few years ago and I was searching for things. Um, but there is a Hittite text um, concerning the land of Pitassa, which is Pedassa, which uh, is, this is the way it's normally taken, which you can see on the map there near, near Yalbert. Um, um, and um, this is um, KBO 1878. It's been discussed by Beale, Camarasano. Um, so it, so the, the, someone is reporting that the men of Pitassa refused to fight during the Harpia uh, festival. During the Harpia, we don't really know what the Harpia festival was, but it's mentioned elsewhere. So it is striking that this practice comes from, again, from Western Anatolia. And it, it may, one, you know, one possible um, rational hypothesis would be that this is a sort of Western Anatolian Aegean uh, practice, not fighting during festivals, which has somehow just survived in these in these in these pieces of evidence. So those are those are the basic sort of cases I've been been looking at. I'm sorry, that was like a, a whole hour's paper um, sp spoken very quickly <laughs> in 15 minutes. So you're probably very confused. But to sum up, um, what I would say is I was struggling to come to a conclusion earlier on, I would, I would say this. Um, all ancient cultures have military rituals, and this is a topic that could actually use more research. The military rituals of different cultures are to some extent similar, e.g. Hittite and Roman evocatio deorum, as I was mentioning. Two, some of these parallels, though not all, may be, may be the result of historical influence, especially since there's reason to believe that states often adopt other states' military practices. This certainly happens. Third, Hittite and Greek military rituals look different, but Greek poetry and myth mention war rituals of the Anatolian type, for example, Calchas's purification of the army in Homer's Iliad, which resembles Dandanku's ritual, which would be a Western Anatolian ritual, so a Luvic ritual. And finally, this doesn't prove that Western Anatolian military rituals influenced Greek ones, or vice versa, because that's possible too. Uh, but I, I still think this hypothesis is worth serious consideration, since Mycenaeans must have encountered Western Anatolian and Hittite armies in battle. Thank you very much.